Hi, and welcome to the Nuclear Snail channel. This one is about making stencils onto fabrics, such as distressed army snail shirts, and also hard surfaces, such as, for example, this piece of riot gear thigh protector thing. So let's get started. Here is what you are going to need. Your hard surface item, if you want to spray one, your textile, of course, a print of your motif and a scalpel to cut it out. Also, you will need temporary spray adhesive for textiles, acrylic spray paint, thick acrylic regular paint and a small sponge, duct tape and hairdryer, which are optional, and of course, socks and sandals. These are not optional and essential to success when doing anything in life. Okay, first of all, you of course need to print out your stencil. I'm using low print opacity to save some printer ink. And uh, cutting paper with a scalpel is pretty much straightforward. Don't use too much pressure, don't use uh, too low pressure. Just get a good feeling for cutting the paper without destroying your table while doing so. And the most important part when you cut is cut and do not tear. So let your instrument, let your tool do the job. Let the knife cut the paper instead of you like tearing it like this. This is never good. When you're finished cutting out your stencil, it's time to use it. For the demonstration of that, I will not use the paper stencil, because I never finished that, because I'm lazy as fuck. Instead, I'm gonna use this lasered stencil. Basically, it's a sturdy plastic foil, which you can use multiple times. Of course, you must then clean it up sometimes. You see, here it has collected a lot of paint, and I regularly clean the stencil, because the most important part is, again, the edges. If your edges start clogging up with paint or, or otherwise get blurry and bad, so will be your stencil. The edges are the most important. So before I apply the stencil, I take a simple sheet of paper and put it inside of the shirt. What this does is prevents the paint from seeping through the front, through the chest, and uh, leaving stains on the back. If you don't care about that, and it doesn't happen quite that much, to be honest, then you can skip this step, but I usually prefer not skipping it. Next, I will approximately locate where my stencil has to go. Basically just eyeballing. And then I will turn the stencil around with the back side. And then I take a spray adhesive. This step is the one that is most overlooked by the most people trying to do stencils and you should not skip it. Shake the can and apply some on the back side of the stencil. Now carefully position it where it should go and when it has made contact everywhere it should, I'm folding over the shirt from the bottom or you can take any sort of towel or whatever and basically firmly press it against the shirt. Once you have done that go with your fingers along the edges. Again, the edges are uh, the thing that make or break a good stencil. Since this is a two-part stencil, I also have to do the same for the center of the snail house. You don't have to apply a lot of this uh, spray adhesive, just a bit of it, and carefully eyeball and position it where it should go. Repeat the procedure with pressing it firmly. There we go. And the edges are nice and tight. Nothing is moving. So now I can begin the actual stenciling process. Uh, for this I'm using this very thick acrylic paint. It's actually a textile paint. Textile or acrylic is it's pretty much the same stuff. This stuff has to be very thick. If it isn't, it will um, basically seep into the shirt. The stencil will, will get blurry and not in a nice way. Okay, you see how thick this is. This is pretty thick. And uh, what I wanted to do is to not be in one place like this. I wanted to basically get into the sponge. Alright, and now when your sponge looks like this, 
with the paint distributed nicely and evenly inside of it, you go and you, you don't stroke. You, you could also stroke really carefully like this, but what I usually do is going from, from the top like this. The reason for that is that when you stroke, you risk shifting your stencil on your workpiece. And uh, of course you may not use too much paint at once. Like if I would stencil with this blob, it would also basically just seep into the short, um, maybe seep under the stencil edges. This is why you also apply several uh, coats of this. So for now the first coat, it's not, like it's not really opaque just yet. But it's fine as it is. Um, first I tip lightly and then uh, when my paint is basically almost gone from the sponge I go again and press more firmly. Have to be very careful around the center of the snail house because right here the uh, stencil is really thin so have to pay a lot of attention not to accidentally shift it. Alright, so that would be the first coat. Uh, now you can either let it dry or just use a fan. And by fan I of course mean a hair dryer. And you stop once uh, it feels kind of solid. It's, it's still a bit sticky but you start basically noticing that it's kind of dried and then you repeat the process as many times as you like. I usually do it two times, that's usually sufficient. Again, distribute the paint evenly and then another go pressing more firmly. And uh, also important when stenciling, it will always look kind of like it's not opaque enough. But compare this to this. It is already pretty opaque for what we're doing. So now that it's done and dried, I will start slowly removing the stencil. First of all, I make sure that uh, there is no uh, wet paint on my fingers. Uh, wouldn't be a, too big of an issue for a post-apocalyptic shirt, but you know. And I start by removing the center of the stencil here. And when you remove the stencil, you want to be as careful as possible. Uh, with paper stencils, uh, you can achieve uh, several life cycles, actually, if you are really careful. Uh, but even with this Millar foil, uh, you should uh, watch out not to tear it accidentally. It uh, can take a lot of abuse, but, you know, the better you treat it, the longer it lives. And now I also carefully remove the stencil. With this particular stencil, I go until here, until you see I'm getting some really bad angle right here uh, for pulling it off, so it would uh, put a lot of stress on it. This is why to remove it from this side, I go from the other side. Just be gentle with it. And here we go. Nice clean edges. Uh, the stuff you see in the middle, it's the residue from the spray adhesive. It can be removed quite easily. Well, not quite that quite easily right now, but I could uh, pluck it off with a knife very easily. I usually don't because, you know, it's the apocalypse. And a very important thing, uh, you might do it after every use. I do it like every 10 uses. Uh, you might want to remove the rest of the paint uh, using acetone on this mylar foil works pretty well. It, acetone doesn't dissolve it, so you could do that. Uh, or when a thick layer builds up, you can just pull it off. Let me show you. Like this. Okay, and now I'll show you how to apply a stencil to a hard surface. And this is a piece of right gear, and as you see it has a simple curve. You can stencil surfaces with a simple curve quite easily, but a compound curve, like something uh, like a dome of the helmet, for example, that is already much more difficult or even impossible, but this should be no problem. 
For this I'm going to be using the same spray adhesive. It's a temporary spray adhesive, not a permanent one. And acrylic spray paint. This is why you should do this in a well ventilated area. The stencil I'm going to be using for this is a different one. Stick it to the surface, there is no second piece that needs adjusting, fitting. It is one piece, this is the way a stencil actually should be, as simple as to use as possible. Uh, so, since uh, this has a curve, I want to make this things a bit easier by applying some duct tape to the edges to counteract the warping forces and I locate where the stencil should go let's say, actually it's this way around let's say here and I stick it on one end with the duct tape and now I flip it over and apply the spray adhesive just a bit of it is enough and now I roll the stencil on the surface making sure it makes proper contact and when I'm about done I take another piece of duct tape make sure again that it's made contact and fixate it on the other side as well you don't have to use duct tape especially on a small stencil like this but if the stencil is bigger than the warping forces might force it to um, basically cause gaps in areas like this because this will be lifting so now if you look at this you see it's making almost perfect contact everywhere except maybe here yeah anyway it will never be 100 percent perfect but you can try Right, and now that it's fixated, um, if you don't want any spray paint to land uh, around the stencil area, you can cover that, but for this one I don't actually care. So I will just go ahead and spray. And you see that I'm not rushing it, I'm applying the paint very slowly, and then I let it dry just a bit. You can blow in it. Make sure again that my stencil is still sticking to the surface and then I apply the second coat. The main thing to do is never flood your piece. If you flood it, if you do it too fast, if you rush, you will get a bad result. So this spray paint dries pretty quickly. I don't need to use a hair dryer, I could, but I don't have to. And I'm already starting to remove the stencil. And here we go. For the most part I like it. There are a few blurry areas, like for example here. Those uh, blurry areas that look like they have actually been sprayed they result from the stencil not making perfect surface contact, not sticking to the surface perfectly on the edge. But for a zombie apocalypse stencil, I think that's fine. And of course, if you want your stencil to look even more sprayed and authentic, then you can just make sure that the stencil makes bad contact with the surface. That's always an option. So, yep. As for making the shirts look grungy and dirty and torn, I have actually made a whole separate tutorial just about that, applying permanent distress and grunge effects to post-apocalyptic clothing. If you go into my video list on my, on my channel, you can find it. But when working with shirts, there are a few things that are different. For example, I'm just using my serrated knife, because using the shredder tool would just destroy the shirt. It's way too brutal for this kind of fabric. And also I'm not using alkyd based paints and I'm not super saturating the shirt with paint otherwise it would get just too stiff to wear it straight on the body. What I'm using are black 
white and brown acrylic paints. These are mixed with water one to one to make them runny. Unlike the logo stencil paint, I want these to be runny and to actually seep into the shirt. So these three are one to one ratio. And what I'm also going to be using towards the end is a blood paint mix. This is in my case two part red, one part black and just a bit of water. It will of course depend for you on the kind of paint tone you have and maybe you're lucky enough to just find a acrylic paint which looks like blood right off the bat. As for applying the paint to the shirts, I'm just using the shirt as a wiping cloth. And I'm having multiple goes at putting the paint on the table, wiping it off, putting it on my hands, wiping it off, alternating between the different tones of paint, and sometimes I'm also putting some paint onto my hands, like you see me do with the blood paint, and just shake it off onto the shirt to create some nice splatter effects. Particularly in case of a bloody paint, it gets really bloody really fast, so I'm using just a bit of it. If you're out for a super grunge look, a super bloody look, sorry, then you can use more of it, but for me that's enough. And here you see the final result. Okay, that's it for this tutorial. I hope it was useful for you. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. See you next time and hail the snail.